For LCIG, the GJ tube is placed by a general surgeon, interventional radiologist, or gastrointestinal physician. Around the time that the tube is placed, the patient will receive their pump, cassettes containing the medication, and a connector to attach the LCIG cassette to the tube. They may also receive batteries for the pump and syringes for flushing the tube with saline. The initial pump titration is best completed when the patient isn't taking any levodopa. So have your patient stop all levodopa the night before their first programming appointment and come to your office early in the morning. They should bring all supplies, including one medication cassette. Then use the following formula to calculate the morning and continuous infusion doses. Step one, use the dose of levodopa taken in the morning and multiply it by 0.8 as the intestinal gel is more effective than the pills. Then divide this number by 20 because there are 20 milligrams per milliliter of levodopa in the gel. This will give you the morning dose of LCIG in milliliters. Step two, calculate the continuous infusion. Add all doses of levodopa taken during the day minus the amount taken in the morning. This gives you the total dose of levodopa needed for the continuous infusion. Divide this total by 20 to convert it to the gel dose. Then divide this number by 16, which is the number of hours during the day that the patient can wear the pump. This gives you the continuous infusion. You'll also need to decide if you want the patient to be able to adjust the level of their continuous infusion throughout the day or just give themselves extra doses. This is done by adjusting the lock level. Lock level zero allows full access to all programming and is the setting that you'll use to program the pump. Lock level one allows the patient to be able to increase or decrease the continuous infusion during the day based on their symptoms. Lock level two locks the settings so that patients can't change the continuous infusion and can only give themselves extra doses. When the patient arrives, program the pump and start the morning dose. While you're monitoring for improvement, you or a nurse should review the following. Wound healing, the daily routine of washing the tube, cleaning the stoma, hooking up the pump, removing the pump for showers, and removing it for bed. How to give themselves an extra dose for off time, pausing the pump for bothersome dyskinesias, what to do if the tube or pump malfunctions, and what to use for nighttime symptoms. The medication should start to take effect within 30 to 45 minutes if the morning dose is sufficient. If it takes longer, then you may need to increase this dose. Send the patient home and have them track how long it takes to start working in the morning, if there are off times during the day, and if so, when these occur, how many times they're taking an extra dose or an extra pill, and if they have bothersome dyskinesia that requires them to pause the pump. I recommend follow-up every one to two weeks until patients are only using two to three extra doses per day. This indicates that they are at a good continuous level. Let's review an example of how to calculate the morning and continuous infusion doses for a patient. Mr. M was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease eight years ago and initially did very well with levodopa monotherapy. However, in the last five years, he's had progressively worsening motor fluctuations despite adjusting his medications and trying the apomorphine pen as a rescue therapy. After discussing the risks and benefits of DBS and LCIG, he chose LCIG because he was worried about the possibility of having a stroke with DBS. Following the tube placement, you schedule an appointment for 8 a.m. and provide the following instructions. Stop carbidopa levodopa at 8 p.m. the night before his appointment. Take other medications on their usual schedule. So in his case, he's taking pramipexol and estradephaline and bring one medication cassette, the pump, and supplies for the tube to the appointment. At the appointment, you first calculate the morning dose as follows. This patient is taking two pills of carbidopa levodopa, 25 100 milligrams, six times per day. 
So the amount he takes in the morning is 200 milligrams. You multiply 200 milligrams by 0.8 because LCIG is more effective, which equals 160 milligrams. You divide 160 milligrams by 20 milligrams per milliliter because there are 20 milligrams per milliliter of levodopa in the gel. This equals 8 milliliters. You'll need to add 3 milliliters to account for filling the tube with medicine. So the total morning dose is 11 milliliters. Next, you determine the continuous infusion dose as follows. Add all his levodopa together, so 200 milligrams times 6, and then subtract the morning dose of 200 milligrams. This equals 1,000 milligrams. Divide the total dose by 20 to convert it to the gel, so 1,000 over 20 equals 50 milliliters. Then divide this total by 16 hours, so 50 divided by 16 equals 3.125 milliliters per hour. Finally, round to one decimal, so the continuous infusion dose is 3.1 milliliters per hour. You then program the extra dose by starting with 2.5 milliliters, as this is equivalent to 50 milligrams of levodopa, or half of a 25 slash 100 milligram tab. You decide to set him on lock level two, so that he can master managing the tube and pump before learning to adjust the continuous rate. After the pump is programmed, coach the patient through connecting the cassette to the pump and tube and starting their morning dose. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how Met Mastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About Met Mastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.